Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs. Today we are completing day nine of Advent of the Cyber Challenge and we'll be learning about pivoting. This is a 24 day challenge where we're learning something new from Try Hack Me. And this room was created by Rapid7 where they would like to teach us how to pivot using Metapreda, which is their tool that they created. So first thing that we need to do is understand what is Metasploit and how do you use Metasploit. Uh, and you can read through this but our main task today is to be able to identify a target that is vulnerability, get into the target, and then pivot to the Docker container that it's running. So I highly encourage you to read through this if you are not familiar with Metasploit. Then the other thing is I started the machine and I prefer to use my own Kali Linux. I'm a paying member of TriHackMe, so I prefer to use my personal Kali with the VIP uh, network. So if you go here, you will notice that I already started Metasploit on my personal Kali Linux, but you can use theirs by starting it the same way that they show you here. It's going to be the same, I just prefer mine. So they say the first task is you need to use Metasploit, you need to type MSF console. So in my Kali here, I came ahead and I typed uh, MSF console and I got the stuff here. I also wanted to show you that you can launch Metasploit by use, using MSF console with a quiet mode, that way you don't get uh, the stuff like the logos and all the random uh, interesting text that comes in the beginning here. But I like this because you get a different one every time, but that's just two ways you can do that. So once you do that, uh, in this case, let's go to our questions, then we'll come back to the instructions after. Deploy the attached VM and wait for a few se seconds. What ports are open? So I don't know what ports are open, so I'll run Nmap like I normally do from my Kali just the traditional nmap scan. All right, so my nmap is done and you see that we've port 80 open when we were running Apache with this version. So what ports are open is port 80, so just one port. Okay, so what framework is the web application developed with? Visiting the web application by going to the URL. You see that we have the default text and all the way at the bottom here, we have la la <laughs> we have this name here, okay. So now that we know the, the name, we can go to Metasploit and use the search function for, you can just go to exploit DB if you wanted to, version, but we can just search for the application and you see that we do have an RCE here. Uh, the, it says excellent. We also have another RCE on HTTP unserialized same. So which one do we want? So this one says unauthenticated. This one says framework token. So we'll go with the unauthenticated one. So we can say use one from, from our results. Then we can clear that, uh, show options. What options does this take? Okay, so first, um, if it says required here, we actually have to put it. So log file, we don't have proxies, we don't have our host. We need to set our host. Set our host to our IP. Okay. Set our host. Mine is going to be on TAN0 because I'm using a TANO. Set our host to whatever your IP address is. Let's answer the next question here. We hit submit. No, submit. Uh, what is CVE application vulnerable to? What CVE? CVE in the name of the one that we want. If you look at this CVE report. So we use that number. Okay, so in the room they said uh, set our host, which we already did. Set our host, which we already did. Run or check. In this case, I'll just run it. In this case, I'll just say run or exploit. Okay, exploit completed, but no session was created. Why? Uh, exploit aborted due to failure, not vulnerable. The target is not exploitable. Set force exploit to true. Okay, so running it <laughs> the same way that they did in the room. I don't know what's the difference, except for they added the HTTP client timeout to 20. As you can see, now I'm getting a shell. So we had the correct one. I just said go back and uh, get some help from the room. Make sure that I get the shell. In this case, I got a shell. 
But the only difference is was run. I didn't have to say our host here because it was already defined. Then HTTP client timeout of 20. And shell session opened uh, on port 444. Can I see? Okay, I now have ID. In this case, I'm in as WW data. So that is what we did. So what command can be used to upgrade the last shell in to a metaprater session? Okay, so to upgrade the recently um, the recent session, we need to background it. Then sessions minus u minus one. That will bring us uh, a metaprater session. So we can say background. Yes, background. Then sessions minus u minus one. That should give us a me metaprater session. So it's sessions minus u one. What file indicates a session has been opened with a Docker container name? Okay, so in our documentation here, we see that we have a dot Docker env. That's the file. So it's a dot Docker env. If you read through the documentation, and my session did show that. What file often contains useful credentials for web application? Okay, let's find that file. Um, dot. It's a hidden file, so it must be the environment uh, file pwd ls minus la no we need to be in ww ls slash var slash www that should be an ls minus la so here's the environment let's see if we can find interesting stuff there okay that file all right usually people will put passwords and stuff in here in this case, we have an app key, database, name, username, and password is Postgres, Postgres. So it's a default creds. So it's a .env file. All right. What database table contains useful credentials? What database table? It should be the users. I can guess that one. What is sent as password? They went and showed us how to use Postgres SQL right here we can resolve web sav service databases from here we know the username is postgres postgres so we have a web service databases 172281051 okay which is the same uh, we can background then uh, add route to that network which is background then let's add route minus one is for our session route edit okay once we do that um, we did a route add to our network here 28 we also see that due to the presence of environment the docker container by default is hard coded IP let's check that where is my IP? This is a local host on Redis. It's all on local host. So we we'll add the container IP. Route add that. Route. Print my routes. We see that we they are tied to session three. And this is our local host. Just like what we saw in our database. Okay. Now we can print a uh, route print, which we just did. Use auxiliary scanner Postgres to see if we can uh, run and dump the database schema. You can use other tools, but right now we're just going to use um, metaprater session. So we use that one. Then run Postgres SQL database at the IP address that we found to see if we can uh, get the database information. So we found the database and we dumped it. Okay, the database called Postgres, table users, username, characters. Okay, what is Santa's password? Okay, so here we can use auxiliary admin Postgres SQL to actually dump information from the database. 
Once we do that, we can say select all from users and we should see Santa's password. All right, and here we go. Here's Santa's password. What, what ports are open on the host machine? So they need us to pivot using a metapreter pivoting. So we're going to come here and use the pivoting feature and run the ports. So first, in order for us to pivot, we need to use SOX proxy. Then we can run it on the server. So we'll use SOX proxy from here. So once we switch to proxy, we can run localhost and open the serv server port on uh, 9050. Just start. So the proxy server was started. Now all we need to do is use that proxy server to scan our network. All right. So I have a few ports op open here, 22 and 80. So that's, uh, those are the two ports that are open. 20. What is the root flag? Okay, we need, we need to get the root flag. So we, we just found that we've put 22 and 80. We can use SSH login if we want to s sign in there using Santa's password that we just found. And to, for that, we use the SSH auxiliary module. So this just allows us to SSH. We can SSH, you know, like directly, but since we already found Santa's pass username and password, we'll just um, use that from Metasploit. Okay, so we need Santa's username and password. If we scroll up, the username was Santa and password was that. And we paste our password, okay. So this should SSH in as Santa. Session four opened. Okay. Let's, let's see it. There we go. ID. LS. Cat root dot text. And we get our flag. So this was a fun room where we used a lot more Metasploit than you we would like like there were other areas where we could not have used metasploit but we did anyway because that was the objective but that was a fun room i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you tomorrow where we'll learn something new please remember to like subscribe and share this video with others otherwise thanks for being here